All right, guys, and welcome back to another Tristan's Reef video. In today's video, you will have the opportunity to watch a grown man break a $600 piece of equipment, or maybe even fix it. But first, a little backstory. So a few weeks ago, my trident started giving me some messed up readings. Namely, it started not giving me any tests at all. Since it's relatively new, breakdowns of the unit and or repair tips were kind of few and far between. At least I didn't really see anything on Google or any of the reef forums that I usually frequent. So some of the errors I got were regarding the feed line, testing errors, no reagent, and no matter how many purges or resets or updates I did, nothing happened and it did absolutely nothing. So now I've built upwards of 300, 400 PCs in my lifetime, and I figured that with that knowledge, I should be able to disassemble and identify what was wrong. So I did just that. I took apart my Trident, testing every tube and dosing head until I finally found the issue. Unfortunately, I didn't make a video of it. However, after reaching out to Neptune, they recognized that in the probably thousands of Tridents that they've sold, my issue was the first of its kind that they had encountered, and as a result, they agreed to send me the part in an order for me to make a self-repair. Now, this was after I assured them that I was old enough to work on sensitive electronics, but before we get into the breakdown, let's get a few ground rules established. I am not a licensed Neptune Repair Center. I am not an electronics professional. And beyond building PCs and some questionable common sense, I really don't know what I'm doing. So if you decide to do this to your Trident, then lol. But with that said, let's get started. So the first thing you should do is go through the Trident shutdown procedure in your Apex. If you don't know how to do this and Google didn't help and you haven't figured out how to access the tasks menu on your Apex, then stop. Find a grown up, make a reefer friend who knows their way around the Apex menus or just send it to Neptune to fix it. But once you have chosen the shutdown procedure and waited patiently for your Trident to shut down and purge all of the lines, disconnect it from the one link and take it to a brightly lit area for your next step in the surgery. If you can't tell when the Trident shutdown procedure is complete, because of course there's no indication, then just do what I did. I stared at it intently for about 20 minutes. I checked the Apex menu like five times. I left for about 30 minutes, drank a beer, and finally said F it and disconnected. The breakdown of the Trident requires no tools except fingers. If you don't have fingers, then stop. Find a grown up, make a reefer friend that has fingers, or just send it to Neptune to fix it. Once you have solved your finger issue, proceed by removing the chemical tray. This will be used to hold your parts and then remove the black and clear lines from the Trident, including the black quick connect and the white quick connect hose barbs. You're going to want to take this opportunity to remove the titration tube cover holding the valve used during testing as well. That's that little black piece right in the front. Next, you're going to want to remove the four black legs on the bottom of the Trident unit. They turn counterclockwise. What they do is that they hold the outer shell onto the frame of the Trident. So you're going to want to pull the sli sides slightly away from the Trident in order to clear those guide holes. You'll see what I'm talking about after you've removed those little legs. The next step is to remove the orange back plate by pressing down on the top tab and leaning it backwards to remove it from the main Trident base. This will expose the wirings behind all of the dosing heads. The next step is to remove the upper Trident cage away from the Trident base. This is done by unclipping the two tabs on the sides, which will separate the upper cage from the lower cage. After you've done this, the next step is to separate the upper sub cage from the pump head guides by gently pulling the cage away from the tabs to separate the lower cage. Basically, this thing comes apart in about like 50 million little pieces. However, it's really easy and really simple and they all have guidelines in order to guide you along the way. Once you've removed that upper cage, 
the dosing tube heads should be a little bit loose. You should be able to gain access to all of the internal components of the Trident. And now we can actually start our repair. At this point, this is normally where my repair would begin. So in my case, my repair actually involves the feed tube and the main feed dosing pump. Now what happened is that a few weeks ago, I noticed that there was a little moisture in my tray. And after tracing all of the lines, I realized that my feed and drain combo line actually had a small hole in it. This small hole seemed to be a manufacturer defect or could have been caused during assembly or a sharp piece of sand or something. But initially, I was able to fix the issue by using some hot glue in order to seal that minor tear. Now this enabled me to continue to do my tests and finish my reagent supply without any issues, at least until my actual replacement tubing came in the mail. Among other things, my fix would be to replace this tubing assembly with the new one that was sent to me. But for my particular fix, I just simply disconnected the existing tubing setup and replaced it using the same tube routing that was already there and present. The most difficult part was connecting the new tubing to the star connector. That's that little star portion right in the middle. There's very little tolerance here, so you definitely have to take your time and make sure that you have enough slack in order to plug it in. Small fingers make this a real easy job. Once that was complete, I rerouted the tubes back along through the guides and out of the rear of the unit. Theoretically, my repair is now complete. However, for those of you that are getting erratic readings after four or six months, it could be from the buildup and stains in the actual titration chamber of your apex. Mine was filthy, and since Trident uses optical lights to gauge the color of the liquid in the chamber, a dirty chamber undoubtedly will cause issues over time. Fortunately for us, cleaning this chamber is really easy. So the next part of the repair, cleaning the chamber, starts by unclipping the sides of the chamber by sliding it down and gently pulling the sides apart. This will happen at the front of the trident, right where you can see the little vial and the little mixing pill. The chamber should come out very easily. There should be no resistance and once you've slightly pulled apart the sides, it should simply drop down. Disconnect the tubing from the chamber and the eight pin connector and then peel off the black tape holding the cap and chamber down. Slide the chamber up and away from the unit. And now we're going to clean the inside of the testing vial. Now let me make this clear. You want to be absolutely careful not to lose the small magnetic mixing pill that sits in the bottom of the chamber. You also want to be very careful about the little barb that comes off of that chamber because it is very delicate. Ask me how I know. So what you want to do is use a little bit of rubbing alcohol on Q-tips in order to clean out the chamber. Be gentle with this. Make sure that you get all the nooks and crannies, but take your time. After you finish cleaning out the chamber with the rubbing alcohol, you can go ahead and rinse the vial in RODI water and dry it thoroughly. You want to then reinstall the chamber, making sure that you clean it off very well with a lint-free cloth on both sides of the chamber that face to LEDs. You don't want to leave any fingerprints or any uh, mess or anything like that on those sides. So with your chamber clean and ready to go, reinstall it into the housing, reuse the same tape that it came with or replace that with some more electrical tape, reconnect the clear tubing and put it back into the unit. It should clip right in. But if you're like me, you probably forgot to put the pill back into the unit. So undo what you just did, open up the tap one more time, drop in your pill, reseal the cap, and then place it back into the unit. Now you've cleaned your chamber. Now the thing about it is that at this point, your repairs and maintenance are technically complete. So this is the time for you to go over each connection, especially the tubes, to make sure that everything is seated well and in its correct position. 
make sure that the micro dosing pumps head heads are seated in the dosing heads so that means you make sure that tube is all the way into that dosing head and they just slide and clip in so there's no crazy unscrewing or anything like that they just clip right in and also take this time to purge your feed lines now this step is incredibly important if your trident has been sitting for any length of time it's quite possible that the salt water in the lines would have evaporated leaving salt and that salt that has remained will clog your lines. Like a Five Guys burger clogs your arteries, yes, that salt will clog your lines. So it's very important to purge your lines and not delay in replacing your reagents so that your testing can continue and the flow of water can continue. Occasionally, you may want to run your fingers over the feed line, feeling for any bumps or lumps in the black line, especially near the connectors, to ensure that there are no obstructions in that line. You can put some water in your mouth and try to blow water through that line to make sure that it comes out really quickly on the other side. Since my personal trident had been sitting for some time, watch how clogged the line was when I tried to blow RODI water through the line. Once your lines are actually clear, you can safely reassemble a unit by reversing the steps you followed to disassemble it. With your unit put together, you can safely put it back into service. If you're fortunate and you follow my instructions carefully, then when you put your Trident back into action, it should work perfectly fine and you'll start receiving those reliable, accurate and consistent results the same way that you were getting them at the beginning. Fortunately for me, my Trident did exactly that. It worked perfectly fine after my disassembly and reassembling of the unit. Here's a closer look at what the issue with my particular unit was, and you can see the small hole in the tubing where it was condensing, where it was leaking, and leaking into the tray of my actual Trident unit. Well, if you've made it this far, I have a couple of takeaways about my Trident experience so far. I've had the Trident for close to nine months now, and I think that there's some room for improvement on this particular unit. So first off, I think that the Trident titration vial should have been made from glass and not plastic. See, whereas plastic might be more durable, the unique shape of the vial probably made it difficult to make one with those tolerances as well as that tiny little hose barb on the end of it. So making it out of glass might have been a little bit more difficult. However, if they are able to make it out of glass, either by redesigning how that unit is actually made, you will probably avoid a lot of things. Plastic, unfortunately, will stain over time. Glass will less likely to stain, especially if, you know, the chemicals are not left in there very long. But certainly, plastic will need replacement over time. And it does require cleaning. This vial, I think, is probably something that should be cleaned at least once a month. And making it a little bit more accessible to the end user to clean out this file without disassembling the entire unit, I think should be made a priority by the Neptune development team. So one of the other things was Trident uses salt water to purge and clean the lines after and during tests. And that means that after you've done a successful test, salt water will be drawn in, they'll use it to rinse out the vial and then start your next test. In my opinion, this source of salt water as a, as a rinsing tool should probably give you an option of using some type of a fresh water for this purpose, right? Because fresh water will remove all of that salt buildup in the lines. It won't, uh, if it evaporates, nothing will happen. You know, salt water will leave crystals in those lines. And I don't think consistently over time, um, you're going to get some buildup in there, right? So perhaps allowing us to use a freshwater reservoir uh, in order to flush the lines out may be a little bit better. So if your tests actually start becoming erratic, then you should definitely check your feed lines because chances are it's not getting into this vial, not filling it up correctly, and that might be the cause of a lot of your problems. So in between reagent changes, it might be a good idea to run distilled vinegar or something like RODI through the lines and the vial to keep it clean and clear of any buildup. I feel like this should be followed by multiple RODI as a water source at least purges to flush the system out and clear it. I'm not sure how vinegar may impact the plastic in the vial. 
but it's clear that saltwater flushes don't keep the vials and lines as clear as I would personally want them in order to have consistent accurate results. I'm not sure how many people have sent in their tridents yet for servicing, but I would hazard to say that servicing would probably include a lot of the steps that I performed today. Regardless of its faults, I still consider the Trident an awesome piece of equipment and I look forward to using it for years to come. If this video helped you troubleshoot your Trident, then please consider hitting that subscribe button and let me know in the comments if you have ever took apart your Trident. As always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you all on the flip side.